Welcome again. Uh, we continue with the point pattern analysis and now we switch from the focus on intensity to a focus on distances and particularly nearest neighbor distances. So we'll talk about the idea behind the nearest neighbor statistic, then go over a number of these uh, distance functions. They're also referred to often as the letter functions because they're characterized by a letter, as we'll see. And then I'll close with some illustration of what these functions look like under the null and different alternative hypotheses. So what's the general idea? The general idea is to make, first of all, a distinction between um, events, which we've considered so far, which is where um, the events happen, like the crimes or the locations of the cholera deaths, in the snow example, and then points. Now you could say, well, it's point pattern analysis, everything is a point, and that's of course correct. But in the literature, there is a technical difference between the event, which is really the phenomenon of interest, and then what is called a point, which is really a reference frame. These are reference points. So you can think of the points as being on a regular uh, rectangular or square grid. And so we are interested in finding regular patterns in the distance either between two events or the distance from a reference point to an event. And the cool thing is that under the uh, null hypothesis of complete spatial randomness, we know we have a homogeneous planar Poisson process. So we know, or we can um, mathematically express what the nearest neighbor distance will be. Because you can think of, and I mentioned this earlier, uh, the nearest neighbor distance is really um, the radius uh, to the nearest neighbor distance corresponds a radius of a circle around the event. And because it is the nearest neighbors, neighbor, there is no other point within that circle. And as we saw earlier, under the uh, formal expression of the homogeneous planar Poisson process, we can calculate exactly what the probability is of not having any point in that radius. And that is uh, the complement of that is, of course, the probability of having a nearest neighbor. So um, under CSR, complete spatial randomness, the nearest neighbor distance has known mathematical properties. And then we will build tests, and there are many, many nearest neighbor statistics that uh, detect deviations from these properties. And the way this is implemented is by either taking the distance from an event to the nearest event using our new uh, terminology, or the distance from a reference point, the point, to the nearest event. And we um, can look at the distribution of these distances and then compare that to what the distribution would be under complete spatial randomness. That is the general idea. And so, as it turns out, in the literature, there are many nearest neighbor statistics, and we'll just go over a few of these. And these are the distance functions, also um, referred to, as I mentioned, as the letter functions. And the idea is that we will take for each event the nearest neighbor distance, and then we plot the cumulative distribution of these near nearest neighbor distances um, as a function of the distance. And that curve, that function, will then be compared to what it would be under complete spatial randomness, which is, as we've seen already several times, represented by a planar Poisson process. And to uh, compare that, we can either do the math, which is actually pretty simple to do, uh, since it's uh, using the Poisson distribution, or we can use a computational approach at inference, which is uh, called a, a, a simulation envelope. And a simulation envelope, the idea is that we mimic 
a point pattern under spatial randomness. And we saw earlier um, how to do that. It's actually pretty easy to do if we have a fixed number of points. We just give their x and y coordinates uniform random numbers and that gives a replicate of what a point process would look like under complete spatial randomness. And so for each of these replications, we can construct the curve, the cumulative distribution of the nearest neighbor distance. And then we can either take the maximum or minimum for every distance or some relevant quantile like 95 percentile, 5 percentile, things like that to create a band around what the distribution would be under complete spatial randomness. And then we can compare the actual curve that we have to that band, to that distribution. So as I mentioned a couple of times already, we call these letter functions. And the three that I will briefly discuss here are the G, the F, and the J function. And most of our attention will be on the G function. The others basically are the same principle, uh, only applied to a different measure of nearest neighbors. And all of these are cumulative functions of the nearest neighbor distances. The G function is from event to event. The F function is from the reference point to the event. And then the J function combines the two of them in, in one expression. So um, this is not about clusters. If you recall the distinction I made earlier between clustering and clusters, this is about a global property of the point process. process. So it's either clustering or diverging but we don't really at this point know where the clusters might be. That, that comes next. So the event to event distribution, the G function, is the cumulative distribution of the nearest neighbor's distances. And here's the expression. So for each distance R, we count here how many uh, nearest neighbors satisfy that um, condition and then we take the average of that. So let's say we take a distance of one mile for each of our events. We see whether there is a nearest neighbor to that event within a mile and we count those up and then divide it by the total number of points. And that then we can plot um, against the distance itself. So for each distance, so one mile, two miles, three miles, four miles, and so on, we can uh, plot the proportion of the events that have a nearest neighbor uh, within that distance range. Uh, to do this in practice, um, as you'll see in the labs, there are a number of different edge corrections. I'll talk to about edge corrections later, not in too much technical detail, but just to give you a general idea what, what is going on. So we don't worry about those too much at, at this point. You'll just see different plots for different edge corrections. In our examples, they're all pretty much the same, very, very similar. So under complete spatial randomness, what does this mean? So as I already mentioned, um, the fact that we have a nearest neighbor at distance r means that in the circle with a radius of r around the event, there are no points. And as we've seen already, using the Poisson, the expression for the Poisson distribution, the probability of having no points in that circle is the negative exponential of the intensity of the process, lambda, and the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. So then the probability of having a nearest neighbor is the complement of this, is 1 minus this negative exponential. And it therefore becomes very simple to plot this function, 1 minus the negative exponential against the distance r. And that's our reference, and to that reference we compare our actual distribution. One of the sample data sets that we'll use in the labs is a distribution of liquor stores in Chicago from, I believe, 2015 or 2016 when I scraped this off the web for a, a, a project. 
And so here the blue line is the theoretical uh, plot of one minus negative exponential um, lambda pi r square against the distance on the horizontal axis. And this um, brownish dark line, there are actually three different lines, you know, the, the, the raw one and then with two edge corrections. But as you see, it doesn't make hardly any difference. This is the cumulative distribution of the um, nearest neighbor distances. So what, what does this actual mean? Think about this for a second. Under spatial randomness, this should be the plot. So our plot actually has more nearest neighbor distances at closer distances than there would be under randomness. So more points closer together implies clustering. So under clustering, actually, the curve is above the line for the complete spatial randomness. So how do we do inference? Um, analytical results, other than drawing the function, the blue line that we saw, are actually uh, pretty hard to come by or only work if we make very strict assumptions, which then turn out to be pretty unrealistic. So we're back to our simulation approach, which is actually super easy to do. Um, we have the number of points, n, and so as I already mentioned, we just use uniform random numbers for the x and y coordinates, create however many, 99, 999 random point patterns, and then for each of these, get our g function. And then we look at the combined set of functions, and for each distance or for a number of reference distances, we take maximum, minimum, or as I mentioned, some quantile which creates what we call a simulation envelope. So what does this look like? For our example, uh, the g function doesn't change. It's still the same. But here around the null for CSR, same function as before, but now it's red, we have this gray cloud, which gives us from the simulations what was the highest and the lowest value that we saw for that given distance. And so even taking into account the randomness reflected in this band, in this gray envelope, so to speak, this curve is still well above it. So um, this gives us a, a certain degree of confidence that we can reject the null hypothesis of complete spatial randomness. So as I mentioned, one part already, the interpretation, if the function is above the randomization envelope, it, it's a suggestion of clustering. As I uh, alluded to, it, it really tells us that there are more points closer together than they would be under spatial randomness. If the curve is below the randomization envelope, then it's the other way around. Then there are fewer nearest neighbors for small distances. So that means that the points are pushed out or uh, inhibition divergence. So again, just to repeat, this is a global property of the point pattern and it does not tell us where the clusters are themselves. Okay, so, so far we've dealt with the events themselves and we looked at the nearest neighbor distances between events as such. Now we move to our second approach where, where we have our reference frame, say our points on the grid. And now we do the same thing, but instead of computing the nearest neighbor distance for each event, we compute the nearest neighbor distance for each reference point. So for each reference point, and there's m of those, we do the same counting. We count how many events are within that nearest neighbor distance and then we plot the cumulative distribution again against the distance. This is also called sometimes the empty space function. If you see that in the literature, this is what it is. So to get the empty space function, you need reference points. That's the main difference 
with the G function. And again, as before, uh, we'll talk about this uh, later in, in the next uh, lecture, actually, um, we have edge corrections. So here um, we have the um, same, same idea using the Poisson distribution gives us the theoretical function and then we have the randomization envelope and in this case uh, we use the supermarkets example that we've uh, used in the labs and we see that the f curve is below the randomization function so the um, in this case that is um, an evidence of clustering so it's it's flipped around from the g function so in the uh, j function the is the combination of g and f so this is actually more of a theoretical uh, treatment and there's a, um, a very nice way that this function connects to specific models for spatial point process processes as i mentioned the other day we won't really get into this uh, in this course but there is a huge literature on statistical models for spatial point processes. So the J function is 1 minus G over 1 minus F. And again, we can have edge corrections. And the, the cool thing about this J function is that for complete spatial randomness, it should be a horizontal line. And so um, in this case, we have the J function under here, which again points to a clustering. So um, we have the reference line, we have the theoretical, uh, the, the theoretical value, sorry, is the horizontal, and then the red and the green one are different edge corrections again. Okay, so um, just to uh, recap, um, for the G function specifically, um, what does this look like under different uh, hypotheses? So first under the null, on the left here, we have a spatial, um, spatially random point process. It's very easy to do this in SPATSTAT, as we'll see, uh, or as you can see in the labs. The uh, black line is the actual G function computed for this. The red line is the theoretical value for the Poisson process. And then the green and the blue are the randomization envelope in this particular case. And so then what does it look like for clustering? As I, I mentioned, you know, we have a tendency to go above the um, envelope for clustering. This is a, a particular simulated clustered process. This is actually a parent-child process. So you, you cluster a start point and then you generate some children around that start point which guarantees that it's clustered and then finally the opposite is this is a particular um, spatial distribution called the Matern 2 inhibition process and here you see how the g function is below so um, in a nutshell what we've seen here is that instead of using intensity as the metric to characterize the spatial process, we use the distance between events or the distance between a reference point and an event. And particularly, we focus on the nearest neighbor distance. And we take these nearest neighbor distances and plot their cumulative distribution function. And because it's so easy using the Poisson distribution to figure out what this distribution would be under spatial randomness, we can have a reference function or we can simulate a spatially random uh, process and get a simulation envelope or a randomization envelope. For the G function, if it is above, it's clustering. If it's below, it's inhibition, it's um, divergent process. So next we'll consider the K function, which is focuses on the second order properties, not on the first order properties. See you then.